Hi guys. You know they say, uh, well, my motto is don't give me flowers <laughs> and don't give me diamonds, give me chocolate. Because I love chocolate, I always have. But uh, I'm thinking about, I'm really craving chocolate today, so, and we don't keep like candy bars and stuff around the house, so I'm thinking about making some fudge. And you say, well, Lori, it's not that time of year when I'm making fudge. But why do you have to wait till the holidays to make fudge? I mean, it is candy, so. And uh, I'm craving chocolate. So let's go in there and let's make some old fashioned, well, almost old fashioned homemade fudge. And it's gonna be good. Um, you can pretty much use any kind of chocolate. If you wanna use dark chocolate, semi, or milk chocolate, it don't matter. It's just whatever you like. And I like them all. Dark chocolate's good for you. But today I'm going to be using milk chocolate because that's what I've got in the pantry. So uh, if y'all like fudge as much as I do, y'all stay tuned because y'all going to like this recipe, I think. Okay, guys, let's get started on our fudge. Now I've got a heavy gauge uh, pot here. And you can see <laughs> how much it's been used at the bottom of it. But it's been a good one and it makes really good candy. So... Um, and it's old, like me. But anyways, it still works okay. So why get why get rid of it if it still works? One of these days I'll get me a new one. But I just can't hardly stand throwing it out. So I've got my heavy my heavy pot here. And what we're going to start with now, I'm going to be cooking with my wooden spoon. So I'll be stirring with. But we're going to start out with a two thirds cup of evaporated milk, and I'm going to put it in my in my pot here. Let me turn my stove on. And I'm going to turn it on uh, medium high because I want it to come to a rolling boil. So I got two thirds cup of evaporated milk and I'm going to put about a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And I need two tablespoons of butter. Now you can use unsalted butter. Uh, I don't use unsalted butter most of the time for anything, but you can. So there's two tablespoons. Did I say teaspoons or tablespoons? It's two tablespoons of butter. And we're going to bring, and then I've got, can't forget my sugar, I've got one and a half cups of uh, granulated sugar. So I'm going to go over this. I've got one and a half cups of sugar. Two thirds cup of evaporated milk, a pinch of salt, and two tablespoons of butter. And that, we're going to stir it and we're going to bring it to a rolling boil. And when it comes to a, a boil, a good boil, I'm going to reduce the heat and uh, I'm just going to reduce it enough to where it's just a low boil. I want it to keep boiling just a low boil and I'm going to do that for about five minutes. So let me get this up to a good rolling boil and uh, I'll bring you back, okay? Now y'all see how this has come to, you see how it's boiling around the edges and uh, it's coming to a full good rolling boil. You need to keep stirring it. And see how it'll, it'll stay at a boil. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to turn it down just a little. Because I still want it to boil. But I just want a low boil. So you see how it's still boiling around the sides. Now I'm going to start my timer for five minutes. I'm going to let it stay at a low boil for five minutes. And then we'll be back. Okay, it's been at a... A low boil for five minutes and I turn the heat off. So the next step is going to be to add a teaspoon of vanilla. Now the recipe calls for two cups of miniature marshmallows and I didn't have miniature marshmallows so I'm using a thing of uh, marshmallow fluff. And it's, it's, it'll do this, you know, it'll set up the same with the fluff. Probably better. And I really do love marshmallow fluff. 
I tell you one of my favorite things to eat is called a fluff and nutter sandwich and that's peanut butter and uh, marshmallow fluff between two pieces of bread fluff and nutter sandwich <laughs> and I know it's not good for you and it's way too much sugar but you know a girl has to do it every once in a while I'll probably do it maybe twice a year it's really good so let me get all this good stuff in there then I'm going to stir this up good my fingers are sticky now I've got like I said I've got the heat turned off melt this marshmallow fluff I'm going to get it melted before I put my chocolate chips in now if you had regular marshmallows it might take just a little bit longer for them to melt so you just really got to stir them and, and get them melted in there now I've got 16 ounces of chocolate chips I'm going to pour in there I'm really gonna start stirring now. I'm so excited because I love, love, love homemade fudge. Just love it. I'm not a big candy bar eater. I don't go to the store and buy candy bars and just sit around and eat them. I just because anymore, I can tell you, candy just ain't as good as it used to be when we were all young. It was so good chocolate's just not as good unless you buy the high dollar stuff now there is some good stuff out there but you're not going to beat good old fashioned homemade fudge I'm just going to really start stirring this now I've got probably about a cup of uh, dry uh, sweetened cranberries I'm not going to put a whole cup I think I'll put and this is just optional I think I'll put half a cup. And then I've got a cup of walnuts. And uh, if you like pecans, you can put pecans in there. I'm just going to put them in there. Now we're really going to start stirring. And you just want to really stir really vigorously for about at least a minute. It smells so good. And you know, you can do this right here. If you're making like a big sheet cake chocolate sheet cake and you want like a fudge topping on top it's delicious just pour this on top of your cake and it'll set up it'll be good okay I'm just gonna keep stirring and stirring and stirring for a minute and then I'm gonna get it in my in my pan we'll put it in the fridge okay I've got an eight by eight pan and I've got it lined with parchment paper. And if you don't have parchment paper, you can use pool and just kind of spray it with a little bit of spray. I'm going to pour this in here. And if you don't want your fudge to stick, you can put it in probably in a, in a bigger pan. And I'm going to get this in here and get it spread out a little bit. Then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for about two hours. Let it set up good. And then we'll bring it out and uh, we'll cut it up and see what it looks like. So look how pretty this fudge turned out. And it tastes really good. Now I used milk chocolate chips. That's why it's a lot lighter color. But if I used semi-sweet or dark, it would have been a darker fudge. But yeah. You know, you don't have to wait till the holidays to make fudge. <clears throat> I'll put a couple of these out. Leave them out for me and Mr. Brown, whoever shows up. And I'll keep the rest in the refrigerator and get them out later. You can even freeze fudge. You just have to make sure you put it in a container that it don't freezer burn so there you go an easy fudge recipe <clears throat> it's really good and it's really not too sweet I looked at a fudge recipe that called for three cups of sugar and I thought woo wee that was too much sugar 
This one had a cup and a half, so. Anyways, it's good fudge. And it was easy. It's been in the refrigerator for like two hours. So I think maybe my chocolate craving's been whooped now. Really good stuff. So if you like this recipe, like this video, give me a thumbs up and share it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps me out. And remember, eat chocolate. It's good for you. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that. Dark chocolate is, but I think in moderation chocolate, a piece of fudge isn't going to hurt you. That's why I'm just putting a few out here, because if I put this whole thing out here, Mr. Brown will eat all of it. So anyways, guys, y'all have a good day. Be careful. And uh, eat a lot of chocolate. God bless everybody.